Well, folks, in today's video, we're in the state of Vermont, and we're on a road trip to a small town called Barrie, where there's a train store which I've been to a couple times in the past. However, I've never done any videos there before, so today I figured I'd bring you all along for a tour, and we'll see what exactly it is they have in stock. So here we are in downtown Barrie, and right here is the train store, it's called Coins and Hobbies. This is a hobby shop, so they have a lot of stuff which is non-model train related, like model aircraft and things like that. However, I found their selection of model train equipment to be pretty decent in the past. Here we are inside, and this is where they have a lot of their model railroading stuff. Uh, the majority of it is either new in the box or used, but most of it's in pretty good shape and the prices are decent. They have all three of the major scales, they've got a little bit of O scale, they've got a decent amount of HO scale, and they've even got some N scale. Most of the rolling stock that they carry is uh, older HO stuff, as you can see they actually have some Tyco Mantua stuff, some regular Tyco stuff, and other brands like Lifelike and Bachman and things of that sort. Up here they had a whole bunch of N-scale tunnels, I believe these were all made by Lifelike and possibly one of their first products. Now something on the shelf with all of the used HO scale rolling stock caught my eye. Right under this tank car is a Baby Ruth box car, and it might not appear to be too special, but it's actually sound equipped. It's nothing fancy, it's actually just a bin with a whole bunch of rocks rolling around in it to kind of create a chuffing noise, but it's still kind of interesting and something I don't think any modern manufacturer would make today. Anyways, if we have a look at the top of the shelf, they have a whole bunch of used HO scale controllers. And off to the side is where they have a lot of the different tracks, they've got a lot of brand new HO scale track as well as some O scale track. The store also has a pretty wide selection in terms of landscaping materials, they had plenty of trees and ground cover which is really good to see. I think the store would have enough of a supply that if you wanted to start up a layout you would probably have all the materials you need which is really good to see, any good hobby store should really have that. And finally, this is where they keep a lot of their HO and N scale stuff. Pretty much everything here is used with just a few exceptions. Here are some of their HO scale locomotives, and here's a look at some of the N scale stuff they have. As you can see, they have a whole bunch of different pieces of rolling stock. Over here is some of their HO scale rolling stock. And then here's just a closer look at some of the HO scale locomotives they carry. A mixture of new in the box and a couple brand new ones. Here's a closer look at some of the N-scale engines which they had. I believe that's a GP40 Santa Fe locomotive. They also had a couple F units. And then here is where they had a whole bunch of HO-scale cabooses. You can see they had probably at least 30 of those. And here's a better look at some of the HO-scale stock. And then down here is their used locomotives. And there are a few in here which kind of caught my eye, particularly that Conrail locomotive, but I wasn't really sure if that was something I wanted to add to my collection. Anyway, that about wraps up the tour for the store. It's not a terribly big shop, but I'll show you all what I bought. Well, I'm now obviously back here in Canada, and I bought two different locomotives, which I am very eager to show you both. So I'll start off with this one right here. It's an old Tyco power torque locomotive, likely from about the 1970s in the chassis system paint scheme. Uh, I bought this locomotive for $20. It looks to be in pretty good shape, uh, the owner of the store actually brought a controller out and tested it and it does seem to run. Uh, he only tested it with wires though, so I'm going to be curious to see how this thing actually runs on the track. But yeah, overall it's just a, a locomotive which I wanted, I, I really like the paint scheme. You know, I know it's unrealistic and maybe a bit ugly, but uh, I really like it, so I ended up buying that. Now the second thing I bought, I'm uh, way more excited about, check this out. So. Back of the shelf, I was about to leave the store and I noticed this. It's a Lionel Golden Chessy System locomotive and I believe they sold this as part of an anniversary set. I don't think they're super rare, but I've wanted to buy one for a while now. Now, this was on a shelf. It was not in a for sale section. Uh, but I asked the guy about it and he said that he didn't really know anything about it. He didn't even know why it was up on that shelf. So he put some wires on it and lo and behold, the locomotive doesn't run. No clue why, but uh, I said, would you take $15 for it? And uh, he kind of looked at it for a while. And he said, yeah, I'll take 15 bucks for it. 
So yeah, I got the two locomotives and uh, I'm pretty happy with that, you know? It's not the biggest train store, but uh, I find every time I step in there, there's, there's something cool and, and this visit did not disappoint. Now, anyways, without further ado, why don't we take both these locomotives over to the track and see what exactly is going on with them. Hopefully we can get a little more insight as to why this locomotive is not working. Hopefully it's not zinc pest like the last one I bought, but I don't know. Let's go find out. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the chassis system locomotive. This thing should fire right up, but as I said, it wasn't run on track. So I don't really know what it's gonna do, but let's give it some power here. And uh, well, it's, it's going, it's very low on power though. Yeah, these power torques are notorious for having all sorts of different issues. This one probably needs fresh oil, as most of them do, but uh, yeah, it does run. Let's see if we give it a, a little more power, if it will uh, kind of break in here. Yeah, I can tell this engine I don't think has been run in quite a while. Yeah, it's doing okay. That, that one's definitely going to need to be serviced, so that's going to be a project for the not-so-distant future. At least it runs. Now on to the more mysterious locomotive, the Lionel. I expect either no current draw or maybe a short circuit. I don't know, what do all of you think? Oh, well that's funny. This thing didn't do anything at the shop. He was putting wires, he tested every wheel. Okay, well now the motor, <laughs> it's running. The, the motor's getting power, that's different from before, but now it, uh, well, it's running again. This engine makes no sense. There's definitely something kind of loose or slipping in there. Let's see, we'll, we'll do reverse again. That is so strange. Well, at least the headlight works. Yeah, that is really mysterious. Feels like everything's in gear, but, you know, there, there could be any number of things going on with this locomotive. Yeah, so that's going to need a little bit of work, but it's a lot more promising than, you know, what I saw when I bought it. So for $15, I'm very happy with that. Well, folks, that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm overall pretty happy with my purchases, and I'm sure with a little bit of work, we can get both these locomotives running pretty well, or at least as well as these kinds of engines can run. I don't know. They're, they're never usually perfect, but whatever. Um, I'm uh, also looking forward to uh, showing you all another tour I did while I was in the States. I was actually just on like a week vacation, and uh, while I was down there, I was in Maine, and I ended up going to a couple antique stores where I also found a few engines so stay tuned for that it should be up hopefully within this week but we'll see but until then i'd like to thank you all so much for watching